the time is five o'clock and here's the one news of five. First, the top stories. Ogre State House of Assembly passed state vigilante service to carry arms. The Sultan says Nigeria will not split, ask elders to, to prevail on resting youth. Nigerian Army says its Operation Python dance will hold in Abia despite truth pullout. Down to dusk curfew imposed on jobs following rumored ethnic clashes. 53 missing as both capsized on River Niger in Kebi State. On the foreign scene, North Korea fires another ballistic missile over Japan. Explosion in London on the ground chip train. Good evening. I am Toby Joseph, bringing you the news in details shortly. Ogun State House of Assembly has empowered operatives of the Vigilante Service of Ogun State to carry light arms in fighting crimes in the state. This empowerment is to regulate the activities of the vigilante groups operating in the state. This follows the passage of the state community's social orientation and safety core agency bill. Speaking with Roxy FM shortly after the State Assembly's plenary in Abegota, Deputy Speaker Tony Obomo, who is the sponsor of the bill, explained that it will assist the state vigilante core to support the police and other security agencies in strengthening the security network in the state. Also, the core commander of the state vigilante service, Lucio G. Gonzalo, says the passage of the bill will enhance operation of its operatives, pledging to ensure effective training of the core operatives. It was a moment of joy for the teachers, parents, and pupils of the Itesi Methodist Primary School 1 at Datuma Biokuta as the loaded precious pharmacy at 25 for its two blocks of classrooms related to the school. Former President Olusha Gambasajo, the State University of Music Primary Education Board, Subeb Chairman, and I like of a balance, of Adido to Badebo, also praised the Precious Farmers Initiative and urged other corporate organizations to emulate the gesture. Obasanjo, represented by his wife, Chief, Chief Mrs. Bola Obasanjo, says the donation will further enhance the learning environment of the pupils while praising the company for improving the healthy lifestyle of the people. This web chairman and Haji Jalil Kewali, represented by Chief Wali Adesiji, commended Precious Pharmacy for its continued support for the education in the state referring to similar donation to the Saruddin Primary School, Jabode. The lack of a balance, represented by the former health commissioner, Dr. Kendi Shefani, described founder of Precious Pharmacy, Dr. Bola Awumirua, as a detribalized Nigerian whose contributions to education development should be appreciated. Head teacher of the school, Hadi Nofio Trinka, says the block of classrooms with furniture and office is the first of its kind in the life of the 98-year-old school. The Chief Executive Officer of uh, Precious Pharmacy, Dr. Bola Romirua, and wife, pharmacist Yetoni, express appreciation to the host communities and bankers for supporting the company's four branches in Abeguta. High point of the ceremony was the commissioning of the classrooms, as well as presentation of awards and prizes to donors. Nigerian Army says its special military operation, Operation Python Dan, will kick off on Saturday in Abia and other Southeast region state as scheduled. Army spokesman Brigadier General Sani Usman in a statement disputed the statement made by Governor Kezi Piazu that the pullout of troops on the street of Abia and Umahia will begin today. Usman says the pullout of troops from the street of the two cities will be gradual and will not affect the troop deployment for the Operation Python Dance. Army commanders in the region, he explains, have been directed to ensure that a special operation is executed to its logical conclusion. The successful completion of the military operation, according to him, will dovetail into various security outfits to the end of the year. He warns that the army will not allow anyone to interrupt its field training during a special operation. Meanwhile, the Sultan of Sokoto al Haji Saar Abubakar says Nigeria will remain as one nation with a common goal of purposeful development despite political tension nationwide. The top traditional ruler, however, warns that activities of some should not be allowed to break up Nigeria. The Sultan in his statements asked elders and community leaders to call to order troubles of youth. He also challenged elder statesmen to call the youth to order, educate them on the need for peaceful coexistence irrespective of their state of origin. Plato State Government has declared a dusk-to-dawn curfew 
in jobs, the state capital, until further notice following reported ethnic clashes in the metropolis. Governor Simeon Long, in a statement by his media aide, Emmanuel Nanle, explains that the curfew between 6 a.m. and 6 p.m. within the greater jobs and Bokoro axis of the metropolis. He directed security agencies to enforce the curfew and deploy security forces to the flashpoint in the city. Following panic created caused by the reported ethnic clashes, the Director General of the Plateau State Peace Building Agency, Joseph Langmang, rushed to make a broadcast to douse detention. National Examination Council NECO has released the result of the 2017 June July Senior School Certificate Examination, written by 1,055,986 candidates. It is a state leads other states with the highest number of candidates who scored five credits and above and five subjects and above, including English and mathematics, with 85%. Trailing negative state are Edo State with 84.61% and Bayeso State with 84.52%. The council's registrar, Professor Charles Wakwe, announcing the result in Mina, says 745,053 candidates, or 17.85% of those who wrote the examination, got five credits in five subjects in English language and mathematics. Also, 947,850 candidates obtained five credits and above, irrespective of subject, while 963,690 had credits in English language and 849,335 in mathematics. The registrar says 58,586 candidates were involved in the examination fraud. He also explains that 2,676 schools in 34 states were involved in mass cheating, while six schools were derecognized for the examination. 26 supervisors were also blacklisted for eating cheating in the examination. 53 people have been feared dead in a boat which capsized at River Niger in Kebi State. The boat conveyed 100 passengers to a market in Lodole, capsized at Bagulu. Chairman of Bagudo Local Government, Al Hadi Mohammed Zaga, briefing his men, says 49 out of the 100 passengers were rescued, while the remaining 53 could not be accounted for. He explained that most of the traders were Gaia Village in Niger Republic. We are still listening to the World News of 5 on Rock City 11.9 FM. Up next, we'll bring you foreign business and spot news. Please do stay with us. North Korea has fired a ballistic missile across Japan, creating new tensions in the region after its nuclear bomb test less than two weeks ago. South Korea's military says the missile reached an altitude of about 770 kilometers, traveling 3,700 kilometers before landing in the sea of Hokkaido. It flew higher and further than one fired over Japan late last month. Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said his country would never tolerate such dangerous provocative action. South Korea responded within minutes by firing two ballistic missiles into the sea in a simulated strike of the north. The U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson also condemned the launch at the United Nations Security Council with later on Friday in New York at the request of America and Japan. London underground passengers have been injured following an explosion on a district line train in southwest London. Police and paramedics were called on Friday to Parsons Green Station in Fulham. Witnesses described seeing at least one passenger with facial injuries. Others have spoken of panic as alarmed passengers left the train at Parsons Green Station. In business, equities trading on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange climbed further to a positive halt on Thursday at the All Share Index. The index rose further by 0.55% to close at 35,660.04 points, as against a growth of 0.19% recorded on Wednesday. The market saw little impact from the decline in the Banking and Oil and Gas Index, which dropped by 0.63 and 1.02%, respectively on positive investor sentiment in the consumer, industrial and insurance sector. The market capitalization also gained 69 billion naira to close at 12.2943 lira naira, pushing the year to date returns to 32.69% as 16 stocks appreciated 
while 32 others depreciated. Okum Oil led the advances with 5.74% to close at 66 Naira 50 Kama per share. Jai's Bank followed with a gain of 4 Naira 4.48% to close at 70 Kama. CI Lizen increased by 4.35% to close at 1 Naira 20 Kama, while Air Service Sterling Bank added 4.00% each to close at 6 Naira 50 Kama and 1 Naira 4 Kama, respectively. Zenith Guarantee Trust and Sky Bank were the most active stocks to boost market turnover as investors invested in 3,241 deals moving up to 128.3 million units of shares, valued at 2.7 billion naira. Finally, in the news, spot news. Nigeria slipped six places to 44 from 38th position in the latest edition of the FIFA rankings, despite a decent performance against Cameroon in the World Cup qualifier. However, the Super Eagles made slight progress in the African rankings, Moving one sports to fifth position. Ahead of African champions Cameroon, who fell 10 places to number 45 in the world and sixth in Africa. Nigeria's next opponent in the race to Russia 2018, Zambia, zoomed 18 places up to 78th in the world after recording a double against Algeria. After a failed move to Birmingham City due to inability of the club to secure a work permit, Super Eagles midfielder Genyo Nazi has confirmed that he has maintained contact with City coach Harry Redman. The former Lazio midfielder was set to join the championship club during the summer transfer window, but the home office in England refused to grant him the necessary work permit. Nazi spoke to Turkish based newspaper Fantic and Thursday saying he was still in talks with Harry. The midfield battler still has three years on his Trabzon Sport contract, but it remains to be seen if the player will move during the winter transfer. That was the World News at 5, and just before we go, the major stories once again. Open House of Assembly empowers State Vigilante Service to carry arms. South out of Sokoto says Nigeria will not split, ask elders to prevail on Western youth. Dusk to dawn curfew imposed on jaws following rumored ethnic clashes. 53 missing as both capsized at River Niger in KB State. On the foreign scene, we told you that North Korea has found another ballistic missile over Japan. London Choo Train Underground Station experienced explosion. For more stories and to listen to us live, please log on to our website www.rockcityfmradio.com forward slash live. Thank you so much for listening. I am Toby Joseph. Good evening.